Hey friends, Rachel here. Uh, today this video is about things to look for when buying a vintage dresser. So these are going to be signs of quality and things to look for that are easy to repair. So the first thing I want to discuss is how to identify if a piece of furniture has been made with wood veneer or not. And the reason why this is important is because it really will tell you how you can refinish it. If it can be uh, sanded down and stained again or if you need to paint it. So uh, just as a little bit of a background, uh, wood veneer became popular in the Depression era and it's because it was a cheaper way to make beautiful furniture. Essentially, wood veneer furniture is made with a solid piece of wood in the center, but it's a cheaper cut of wood. And then they take a prettier, more expensive cut of very, very thin wood and they glued it on the surface. So in this piece, you can see the pretty variation in the grain on the surface, but you can also see this line in the center where they book matched the veneer when they glued it on, giving it the appearance of a really nice expensive cut of wood. An easy way to identify if a dresser has been made with wood veneer is to just open a drawer and you will see, if you look down from the top, see that dark line there? That is where the veneer has been glued on to a piece of wood. So you know, because of this dark line, these drawer faces are made with, made with wood veneer. Now, oftentimes, if the drawer faces are made with wood veneer, the top is as well. To check to see if the top is made with wood veneer, just turn the dresser around and look at the back side, and you'll see right here the layer of veneer glued onto this cheaper wood right here. In my opinion, a dresser made with wood veneer still can be a quality piece of furniture. It just means it has limitations and what you can do with it when you're refinishing. You know, you can't always stain, re-stain areas. You may have to rebuild a top. Um, if the veneer is bubbling and warped like this one, you're gonna have to remove those parts and patch them with some wood filler before you paint it. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna check is the condition of the exterior. Um, I want to make sure if there's any damages that I can fix them. So, and as you can see, the veneer has been chipped and damaged. This is, does not concern me because if I'm going to paint it, I know I can cover this with wood filler and sand it down smooth and you'll hardly notice it. Um, same here, the veneer has chipped here as well. But everything, all of the applique is in really great condition. Here, it's a little bit worn down, but this would be hardly noticeable. If this was the only thing that was wrong on this dresser and it, this didn't exist, I would just stain this area and you wouldn't hardly notice it. Um, but however, the top, the finish is damaged and let me show you. You can see there's some ring marks over here. There's some of the finish that's like coming off and peeling. And this little area is very telling because the veneer is exposed and it's very, very thin. So that means that this top has been refinished before because it's usually not that thin. And if it's been refinished before and it's been sanded down, it means that I probably wouldn't be successful if I tried refinishing the whole thing. If I tried to strip the, the top coat off and sand it even lightly, I would probably damage the veneer anyways because it's already so thin. So I know that I can't restain the top. And over here, uh, I spilled some wax. So it's damaged the finish here as well. But I know I'm gonna be painting this so it doesn't bother me um, with these, these damages. Okay. Another thing I like to look for is the condition of the legs. So I like that this dresser has turned legs and they are in really good condition. They're very sturdy. But you wanna make sure, you wanna kinda shake them a little bit when you're looking at a new piece because you, you don't want there to be cracks, you don't want their one to be loose. Um, it's not completely a deal breaker if one is damaged because you could potentially replace all four or depending on the style of it, you could replace one of them. But legs are a harder repair to make um, just because if you don't get it perfectly right, your dresser could rock or kind of go back and forth like that. So I like to make sure that all four legs are sturdily attached. If the dresser has wooden casters for wheels on the bottom of the legs and any of the wheels are damaged, that's an easy fix. 
you can buy vintage and replica new replacement wooden caster wheels um, that will fix that problem if, that, if that's the reason that the dresser is kind of rocking back and forth. The next thing I'm gonna look for is hardware. Do I like the hardware? Is it in good condition? Does any of it need to be cleaned or replaced or all the pieces there? This one has really cool brass hardware. I like the detail on it. I like how good a condition it is in, and I like the patina, so I'm not gonna have to do anything to this hardware, and I wanna keep it. The next thing I want to inspect are the drawers. There's a couple things I'm gonna look at here, but really the drawers can make it or break it for me. Um, I wanna make sure the drawers are sliding out smoothly, and I wanna look at drawer construction and what repairs need to be made, if any. So let's look at these drawers. First, do they slide out smoothly? This one slides out very smoothly, as does this one. Um, these larger drawers, it's normal for you to have to grab them by both handles and pull them out. So you wanna see, does it catch on anything? Is there anything sticking as I'm pulling them out? So now I'm gonna look at the drawer construction. So this is what dovetail construction looks like. This is really well done. All of the joints are very tight. They're smooth, there's no bumps, there's nothing for it to catch on, and um, it's really well done. So this is like perfect condition dovetail joinery except for a little tiny piece missing there, but this is still great. For the back, this is also dovetail joinery on the back. Um, and as you can see, it's in, still in really good condition. It's very smooth, there's nothing missing. Sometimes you might notice dovetails are a little loose and that's not a deal breaker because if it's just loose, you can glue it and clamp the whole thing together and that's an easy way to replace it. Even if a couple pieces are missing, um, a loose dovetail on a drawer is easy to fix. It's good to look at drawer bottoms as well. Are they warped? Are they damaged in any way? Are they salvageable? If not, uh, vintage drawer bottoms are usually made with one quarter inch plywood and um, it's easy to slide them out generally and slide a new one in because the sides are routed so that the drawer, a new piece of plywood can just slide right in. So I've done that many times and that's a pretty easy fix if the drawer bottoms are warped. So this is one type of drawer slide that you're gonna see on vintage dressers and that's the center mount ones. And this piece here can oftentimes become loose because the nail came out or it became unglued and those are really easy to put back into place. So uh, having a loose drawer slide is not a deal breaker, that's an easy fix. Now we're getting to the inside part of the, of the dresser. And this one, because it's a center mount drawer slide, I have this piece sitting here, and this is just a piece of wood. This one happens to be loose. So even though my dr drawer was sliding in and out smoothly, this needs to be reattached with a nail and some glue, okay? The back is attached just fine. The nail just needs to be pushed in a little bit further. Some dressers, they're gonna have, not have the center mount drawer, drawer glide. They're just going to be, sliding in and out on the sides. And if that's the case, then you're gonna wanna make sure the wooden bumpers, if you will, um, that are on the side that keep the drawer from kind of being wobbly as you uh, pull it in and out, they need to be um, in good condition. And if they're not there, then, you, then that's something that you can install and then it's pretty easy to fix. So drawers, if they're kind of going, shifting back and forth, either make sure they have a center mount drawer glide or that there's bumper, wooden bumpers on either side. Notice the wooden blocks at the back corner of, of the stressor. That's to keep the, the drawer from going in too far. And so if yours doesn't have that and you notice that the drawers do go in too far, that's something that's easily installed. You can just glue little wooden blocks at the back so that your drawer doesn't push in too far. So in this larger drawer, you can see I have my drawer glide here with the supports on either side and in the middle. And this drawer glide is actually one that someone has replaced at some point um, before we got it and the back has come loose. So all I need to do is put in some wood glue and a little bit of nail here at the back and this will be ready to go. This also goes to show that you can use what you have to make drawer glides. Obviously someone just cut a thin piece of pine that was the right width. Um, 
the right width and the right thickness, I should say, and then just nailed it into place. The, even though the back is loose, um, this still works good as a drawer glide because it's the same size and shape as the top drawers. I hope this video was helpful in teaching just a few things to look for for signs of quality furniture and also what to look out for as far as repairs. So on your next vintage dresser purchase, you can make an educated decision.